All right, we got a lot of Pokemon Go news that we need to cover. First, there's going to be a New Year's event that's going to be featuring some new costume Pokemon. And we also got all the details for January of 2024. And I do think there's a lot of things we can look forward to. All right, so that's what this video is going to be about. Let's get right into it. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, it's Conchinsula. I hope you're having a good day and welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. All right, so we got all the details for the New Year's event at the end of this year, as well as a lot of details regarding what is coming to Pokemon Go in the month of January 2024. There's a lot of things to look forward to here, and I'm going to be going over all of these details and talking about the things that matter the most. But first, let's talk about this New Year's event, because like every year, this is a very short event, but it often features some really exclusive Pokemon that you could only get during this short duration. Okay, Pokemon Go's New Year's of 2024 is going to start on Monday, January 1st at 10 o'clock a.m. local time, and it's going to go until Wednesday, January 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. local time. The Pokemon that's going to be debuting is Jigglypuff wearing a ribbon, alongside its evolved form Wigglytuff wearing a ribbon. These are going to be some very rare shinies. I do predict they're going to be exclusive to this New Year's event. So if you want this particular shiny and have an awesome Pokemon for your collection, then make sure you go out and catch as many Jigglypuff as you can. Now, during this event, we're going to have a bunch of fireworks spawning in the skies. So if you see a bunch of fireworks, don't worry about it. It's basically going to be a part of this event. Now, when it comes to the event bonuses, we're actually going to be seeing a couple of bonuses that we haven't seen in a while that is related to your device's widgets. So, you're going to have a half egg hatch distance bonus when you place eggs into incubators during this event, but you're also going to have a quarter hatch distance for the first three eggs that you hatch using the Pokemon Go egg hatching widget. This widget is available on iOS and Android devices, you just need to go to the App Store and download this widget and use it. Now during this event, we're going to see a handful of wild encounters, but they're actually pretty important. First, there is the Jigglypuff wearing a ribbon, which we went over earlier, and then we're also going to be seeing Hoot Hoot wearing a New Year's outfit. This is the only time you can get this particular Hoot Hoot, and considering that its evolved form Noctowl can also have this outfit, it's going to be a pretty neat Pokemon to use in the Go Battle League. And then we're also going to be seeing Darumaka in the wild, and this is a Pokemon that has a perma boosted shiny rate, so every time it is available for catching, I do suggest you go out and farm it as much as you can, considering that it is somewhat meta relevant as an A tier raid attacker, and it also has a rare shiny that not a lot of players tend to have. Now, something else you're going to be seeing in the wild, but it's going to be a little bit more uncommon, is of course Bronzer. Nothing too special with that, it's one of those Pokemon that you do often see during the winter holidays, so I really do not think this is anything special. Now, spawning in one-star raids, you're going to see Bulbasaur wearing a party hat, Charmander wearing a party hat, Squirtle wearing a party hat, Hoot Hoot wearing a New Year's outfit, and Wormpole wearing a party hat. In three-star raids, we're going to see Raticate wearing a party hat, Nidorino wearing a party hat, Gengar wearing a party hat, and Wobbuffet wearing a party hat. These are all Pokemon that you could only get during New Year's every single year. So if you want them in your collection, make sure you go out and do a couple of raids. Now in 5 star raids, we're going to see Buswall in the Americas, Zerkatree in the Asia Pacific region, and Feramosa in Europe. And then in Mega Raids, we're going to have Mega Ampharos. We'll talk more about the raid rotation later on as we go over the January content, but let's move on to what's going to be hatching in eggs. In 7 km eggs, you're going to see Pichu wearing a party hat, Cleffa, Igglybuff, Togepi, Tyrogue, Smoochum, Elekid, Magby, Azuril, and Why Not. Basically, pretty much every single baby Pokemon aside from Riolu is going to be hatching from 7 km eggs. Make sure you go out and hatch a bunch of 7 km eggs if you're missing any of these baby Pokemon in your collection. Now, in field research tasks, you're going to see Darumaka and Bronzor as rewards, as well as a lot of tasks that's going to earn you Stardust. And I actually think I might purchase this just because of how funny it looks, but there's going to be Darumaka hats now available in the in-game shop for your avatar to wear, and yeah, it looks absolutely hilarious. There's also going to be an event bundle for 99 Pokecoins, which will give you one incubator and one premium raid pass. That's actually not too bad, considering that one of these items costs you more than 99 Pokecoins, this is a great way for you to pick up a really small but really good deal. Now, during this event, there's going to be a paid time research that's going to cost $1 USD, and it's going to earn you Stardust, Experience, and even Pokecoins. 
You're also going to be getting encounters with Jigglypuff wearing a ribbon, Hoot Hoot wearing a New Year's outfit, and Wormful wearing a party hat. Alright, so pretty exciting stuff. I'm really looking forward to this New Year's event. I'm actually going to be in Atlanta when this is happening, so I'm going to be in a completely different city and I'm excited to see what I end up catching with the Atlanta tag. But now let's talk about everything that's coming to Pokemon Go in the month of January 2024. There's a couple of raid bosses that I know a lot of players are going to go after, and there's also going to be a couple of events that have gotten some eyebrows raised. As many people predicted, the month of January is going to be themed around the Terrian forms of Landorus, Tornadus, and Thunderous. All three of these Pokemon are relevant in some ways, and I am really looking forward to raiding a bunch of these Pokemon. All of them have their shiny forms also available in the game, so it's going to be a mad shiny hunt, considering that these three Pokemon do not often come to Pokemon Go. So real quick, let's go over what the raiding content is going to be. Between January 1st to January 10th, we're going to have Buzzwall, Zerkatree, and Feramosa in raids. Now the key thing is that all three of these Pokemon are going to be spawning in different regions in the world. If you're in the Americas and Greenland, you're going to see Buzzwall in raids. If you're in the Asia Pacific region, you're going to see the Pokemon Zerkatree, and everywhere else in the world, you're going to get Feramosa. Now, out of these three, it's all going to depend on what you are specifically looking for. Like, if you're a big PvPer, then Buzzwall is definitely going to stand out. But if you want a really good Electric-type Raid Attacker, then Zerkatry should be your target. So, make sure you're communicating to all of your friends who live in these regions, because for most players, the only way you could get the Pokémon that you specifically want, you're gonna need to do some remote raids. But next, let's talk about the other raids that are coming to Pokémon GO. Between January 10th and January 17th, we're going to see Terry inform Tornadus in raid battles. And then from January 17th to the 24th, we're going to have Terry inform Tornadus. And then from the 24th until the 31st, we're going to have Terry inform Landorus. Now, out of these three Pokemon, Landorus is the one that a lot of players tend to focus on. The reason for that is because it is considered one of the top ground type raid attackers, and it does have some decent implications within the Master League. So that is probably the one you will want to go after, but the other two are pretty decent as well. Thunderous is actually a pretty decent raid attacker by himself, but considering that it's going to be in the same month as Zerkatree, I think a lot of players would rather go for that Pokemon. Now alongside these Pokemon, we're also going to be seeing some Mega Evolutions that I know a lot of players actually care about. Between January 1st and January 10th, we're going to have Mega Ampharos in raids, and then from January 10th until the 24th, we're going to have Mega Metacham in Mega Evolution raids, and then from January 24th until the 31st, we're going to have Mega Steelix make its return. Now during the month of January, we're also going to be having Shadow Moltres spawning in Legendary Shadow raids, which happens every weekend. Out of the three Three Shadow Legendary Birds, Moltres is arguably the best one for you to get. It's going to be a top tier raid attacker when it comes to flying types and fire types, so it is definitely one you should go after. Next, let's talk about the plethora of different events that we're going to have. Of course, between January 1st and the 3rd, we're going to have the New Year's event, which we discussed earlier. And then on January 6th, we're going to have the first Community Day of the year, which is going to feature the Pokemon Rowlet. And then from January 6th until January 10th, we're going to have the Lustrous Odyssey event, which I do predict is going to be a very interesting event, but it's only going to be available for four days. So I'm really curious to see what that event is going to entail. On January 14th, we're going to have a raid day featuring Hisuian Typhlosion. Now considering that Hisuian Samurott raid day was a huge success, I do think that this particular raid day is going to be a lot of fun. And then from January 13 until January 16, we're going to have the Dazzling Dream event, and I predict this is going to be a fairy type themed event, and I'm really looking forward to it. And then on January 20th, we're going to have a Community Day Classic, which is going to feature the Pokemon Porygon. And then from January 19th until the 24th, we're going to have a Go Battle Week. And then on January 27th until February 1st, we're going to have the Taken Treasures event. I really have no idea what this event is going to be about, but I do think it's going to be really exciting. Also, on January 27th until the 28th, we're going to have a Shadow Raid Weekend featuring the Pokemon Shadow Ho-Oh. Again, that is a Pokemon that is extremely useful, especially when it comes to the Master League. So that is one you will want to participate in. So make sure you mark your calendars. Between January 27th and the 28th, we're going to have a raid weekend featuring Shadow Ho-Oh. 
Now coinciding with all the raid bosses that we are going to be getting in January, we're also going to be getting raid hours featuring those Pokemon. On January 3rd, we're going to have the three Ultra Beasts, depending on your region. And then on January 10, we're going to have Terrian Form Tornadus. And then on January 17, we're going to have Terrian Form Thunderous. And then on January 24th, we're going to have Terrian Form Landorus. Now in terms of spotlight hours, we're going to have Cast Form with two times experience for catching Pokemon on January 2nd. We're going to have Eevee with a two times catch candy bonus on January 9. We're going to have Routes with two times transfer candy bonuses on January 16. We're going to have Barboach with two times evolution experience bonuses on January 23rd. And then finally on January 30th, this is a pretty big one. We're going to have a spotlight hour featuring the Pokemon Fungus and we're going to have a double Stardust bonus. This is really big because Fungus already has bonus Stardust when you catch it. So having that on top of a double Stardust bonus means you're going to get a ton of Stardust on this one day. So yeah, overall, January is looking really stacked. We are, of course, going to be getting some Ultra Beasts making a return, which leads me to believe that the rest of the unreleased Ultra Beasts are going to be coming earlier on in 2024. I mean, for crying out loud, it's been almost a year and a half since these Pokemon were teased as coming to Pokemon Go. So I'm really looking forward to it. I really do think that there is a lot of things to look forward to in the next coming months. And I do think that this New Year's event is going to be really exciting as well. But in any case, that's going to be it for this video. Now, I would love to know your thoughts regarding everything that I shared down below. What in particular are you looking forward to? Definitely share what it is and let's have a great discussion. And thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. If you ended up enjoying it and found it to be informative, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. And I want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons on Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support my channel in any way, big or small, then make sure you go and check out the links in the description below. For all my patrons, they get a permanent spot on my in-game friends list. So if you want to interact with me in some way within Pokemon Go, like with remote raids or the friendship system, then make sure you go and check out my Patreon. Also, if you want to support my channel without spending any money, you could always do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Conjinsula. And I'm on these following platforms right here. All right, and that's going to be it. I'm Kanjinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch y'all later.